uh, what is your experience of uh, uh, the war? I mean, you covered it. So, Bangladesh is the war. What? Indian people. Ah, you know, I was a, a final year student of Dhaka University at the time, Kamazam Department. And uh, due to the prolonged political uh, turmoil uh, uh, following 1970 general elections, when the Pakistani military rulers, they didn't allow Sheikh Mujib to uh, uh, take the seat of the Prime Minister of Pakistan. Yeah. So that was a huge uh, problem across the country, across uh, from East Pakistan. And Dhaka University, of course, was the epicenter of all the political movements. Even today it is there. So naturally, as a student of that age, I took part in the movement. And after that, when Pakistan army unleashed the terror on Bangladesh people, particularly right from 25th of March, that's what is the genocide day in the country. We, the young people, left the campus, went to our village home, organized people, like many others, I'm one of them. So I crossed along with the 100 uh, friends of school, college, and university, crossed over to Merhalaya Garohil Sariya, that is uh, the place called Mohendra Ganjo. Dal Mohendra Ganjo, Tura. How old were you? 21 years old. Yes. And then what happened? During that war, uh, I had a little bit of uh, uh, two sort of responsibilities. One, I was a guerrilla fighter. Secondly, since I was the final year student of journalism and doing journalism a little bit, not pro full professional at the time. So I thought if I can write about this thing to any Indian newspapers, all the newspapers of Bangladesh uh, coming out from the Mujib Nagar government, Jai Bangla Putrika and Shadin Bangla Betakandru. So I fled the, uh, this uh, Indian border area, went to Guwahati, no, went to Dubri, and from that to Kolkata, met all my friends there and uh, procured an uh, appointment as a correspondent of Shadin Bangla Betakanto within 10 days come back. So my responsibility was dual. And that gave me an enormous scope to see the war not in my area alone, participate in the battle not in my area alone. I travel across almost the entire Northeast, even the Ceylon, I was once here, coming from oh, from Guwahati, Guwahati from here, and that road was uh, so bad at the time. So, I took a lot of pictures of the liberation war, and it is the national, uh, uh, you know, asset now, you know. So, for a young man of that age in 71, I did my part, whatever I could. And um, there is, uh, of course, the achievement of Bangladesh independence through a lot of blood. And that blood also includes the bloods of Indian soldiers. That blood also includes the sacrifice by the people of Meghalaya and rest of the world. You know, very interestingly, the 275 miles border with Bangladesh, the Meghalaya Bangladesh border, all alone, it's a hilly area, but hundreds of thousands of people were there. I saw, I photographed it, you know, in many places. And uh, the support we got, Bangladesh got from the government of Indira Gandhi at the time, from the people. Not only the Bengalis, but others or other also, tribals also. Hey, Bangladesh, hey, these are all the uh, part of Bangladesh independence history. It cannot be forgotten. But what happened after 75, uh, the defeated forces of the Liberation War just uh, hit Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, killed him, you know, this is our history. 
after that long 21 years of you know it's a, it's a very a bad time for Bangladesh and they even didn't want to recognize there was a war of peoples so after some time after Hasina came to return to power you know I personally believe and uh, history has its own power to defend itself defend its truth and whatever is now happening in Bangladesh it is emerging like anything economically and otherwise so all social indexes and all that you know it is because of the liberation war history is taking shape in this country okay. and our younger generation who are taught a distorted history of the liberation war they are now searching out the uh, national heroes 